Good afternoon. Today's presentation topic is process sampling. Gathering information is costly in terms of salaries, expenses and time. Taking samples of information can help ease this cost because it is often impractical to collect all the data. There are four primary sampling strategies. Random sampling, stratified random sampling, systematic sampling, rational subgrouping. Before determining which strategy will work best, the analyst must determine what type of study is being conducted. There are normally two types of studies, population and process. With a population study, the analyst is interested in estimating or describing some characteristic of the population. With a process study, the analyst is interested in predicting a process characteristic or change over time. For example, take a candy factory. A population study would seek to determine the average weight of the entire daily run of candies. A process study would seek to know whether the weight was changing over the day. In today's presentation, we will talk about process sampling. Systematic sampling is typically used in process sampling situation when data is collected in real time during process operation. Systematic sampling involves taking samples according to some systematic rule. For example, every fourth unit, the first five units, every hour, etc. For example, the manager of a billing center is using systematic sampling to monitor processing rates. At random times around each hour, five consecutive bills are selected and the processing time is measured. One danger of using systematic sampling is that the systematic rule may match some underlying structure and bias the sample. Racial subgrouping is a process of putting measurement into meaningful groups to better understand the important sources of variation. Same as systematic sampling, rational subgrouping is typically used in process sampling situations when data is collected in real time during process operation. It involves grouping measurement produced under similar conditions, sometimes called short-term variation. This type of grouping assists in understanding the sources of variation between subgroups, sometimes called long-term variation. The goal should be to minimize the chance of special causes in variation in the subgroup and maximize the chance for special causes between subgroups. Subgrouping over time is the most common approach. Subgrouping can be also done by other suspected sources of variation, for example, location, customer, supply, etc. For example, an equipment leasing business was trying to improve equipment turnaround time. They selected five samples per day from each of three processing centers. Each processing center was formed into a separate subgroup. So, to sum up, with the process sampling, the analyst is interested in predicting a process characteristic or change over time. It has two main strategies. Systematic sampling involves taking samples according to some systematic rule, and rational subgrouping, subgrouping is a process of putting measurements into meaningful groups, for example, like when, who, or where the product was produced, etc. So, now we will continue with the scatter plots. So, Basically, what it is. Scatter plots are used to investigate the possible relationship between two variables that both relate to the same event. The relation between two variables is called the correlation. The scatter plots usually consist of a large body of data. The closer the data points come with plotted to making a straight line, the higher the correlation between the two variables or stronger the relation. All correlations have two properties, strength and direction. The strength of a correlation is determined by the numerical value. The direction of the correlation is determined by whether the correlation is positive or negative. So here are the types of correlation. First of all, the positive one. Uh, it's when the both variables move in the same direction. As one variable increases, the other variable also increases. As one variable decreases, the other variable also decreases. Example can be years of education and yearly salary are positively correlated. So, and the second one is negative correlation. The variables move in opposite directions. As one variable increases, the other variable decreases. As one variable decreases, the other variable increases. Example can be hours spent sleeping and hours spent awake are negatively correlated. So the 
Next classification is strength. Uh, strength indicates how strong the relation is between two variables. Strength is determined by the numerical value of the correlation. A correlation of 1, whether it is plus 1 or minus, is a perfect correlation. In perfect correlations, the data points lie directly on the line of fit. The further the data are from the line of fit, the weaker the correlation. A correlation of 0 indicates that there is no correlation. So, examples. The closer a positive correlation lies to plus 1, the stronger it is. For example, a correlation of plus 0.87 is stronger than a correlation of plus 0.42. The closer a negative correlation is to minus 1, the stronger it is. Examples is also is like a correlation of minus 0.84 is stronger than the correlation of minus 0.31. When comparing a positive correlation to a negative data correlation, only look at the numerical value. So, you don't have to consider whether or not the correlation is positive or negative. The correlation with the highest numerical value is the strongest. Uh, for instance, a correlation of minus 0 0.80 is stronger than a correlation of plus 0 0.52. If the numerical values of a correlation are the same, then they have the same strength no matter of if the correlation is positive or negative. Examples can be a correlation of minus 0 0.80 has the same strength as a correlation of um, plus 0 0.80. So here is the easy example of scatter plot. For example, let's take the ice cream shop, which keeps track of how much ice cream they sell versus the noon temperature on that day. Uh, so here are the figures of the 12 days. So basically here is the temperature and here is the ice cream sales. And this is how it looks when you transfer the same data to the scatter plot. And we can clearly see that the warmer weather leads to more sales. But the relationship is not perfect since it's not in one line, if you will put here. So, this is it.